In this video, we are going to look at the GI probe and global illumination in Godot. We're going to use our maze project to do so. So this is in the continuity of that project and we're going to focus on the visuals now. From the project, open the level one scene and you can get started with the final result from the project on Kickstarter. We're going to delete the directional light and start over from here so I can explain a few things along the way. The lighting that you have at the moment in the scene is only direct. So you put a light somewhere and you have some basic lighting that takes place in there. However, in reality, light bounces around surfaces and get absorbed by different materials. And we want to simulate that in our game to get some more appealing visuals. We are going to add a GI probe in Godot a node that allows you to make some calculations to get that simulated indirect lighting. Select the level one node, press control A and search for GI probe. Now add it to the scene. In my scene, it's not visible because I have to set it visible. So for that at the top of the viewport, go to the view menu, gizmos, and you want to make sure that the eye in front of GI probe is visible. Same thing for the lights that I had hidden. By default, you have some box in which the light will be calculated. The indirect light will be baked because this is going to pre-calculate some of the bouncing data based on the static geometry that you have in your level. So note that this does not work exactly. This is not going to simulate lights in real time. It's going to bake some data so that the calculations are not too expensive and we can get some fake indirect lighting. Now, you see the three dots on the GI probe. You can click and drag on these to extend the shapes bounds. And we want to have the entire level inside of the shape because this is the entire area that will be baked in our scene. And you can press, for example, control two, control three to split your viewport and then display the game from the side view, for example, to make it a bit easier to see how big your element is. So I'm going to make it a little thinner and move it along the Y axis. Now I have my bounding box set. I'm gonna to go to the view menu again, gizmos, and hide the GI probes. You can also press Control one to go back to a single perspective view. Okay, so once we have the GI probe, nothing happens. At this point, we have to bake the information from our scene in order to get our indirect lighting. But if we click that at this point, nothing interesting will happen because we have to tell Godot which meshes it should use for indirect lighting. You have to tell it which meshes are not going to move in your scene and should contribute to that lighting. So first you want to go to the ground and uh, select the mesh instance in the inspector check the use in baked indirect lighting on. We want to do the same for the mesh that constitutes our level, our maze. So for that, we have to go not in the grid map, but we're going to go into our world folder and we have a mesh lib scene that we use. We are reusing that instance in our grid map. So you want to open that scene, select the wall mesh instance and do the same use in baked indirect lighting. So let's save at this point, close that scene. And now we can select the GA probe again and bake it. And the result is going to be a little surprising as you can see. So we have some light coming from the sky, but it's looking very weird because we don't have a sun. We don't have a direct light to lit our scene. So now we want to fix that. That's why I had us remove the light. It's just so you see that this is a common problem that you might have if you try to add GI global illumination to an empty scene. So let us add a directional light once again. This will represent our sun, press enter. I'm going to move it up and I want to zoom a little bit on it and rotate it so that we get some natural sun direction. Now we will have to rebake our indirectional light, but let us first go into the lights parameters and you have to make sure that the bake mode is set to indirect so that it will contribute to indirect lighting. 
then we can reactivate the shadows on this node so that we get nice shadows in our scene. Select the GI probe again and click Bake GI Probe once more. You will see that the lighting changes a little bit. Now, some parts of our level are fairly dark and this is due to two factors. One, it's the lack of indirect energy contributed by our directional light. So we can go back to the directional light and in the inspector, you can increase the indirect energy parameter in order to increase the indirect lighting in your scene. And you will see that it tends to lit some surfaces to make them brighter than they were before. So you can use that to balance the lighting of your scene. Then I want to talk about these artifacts here. So we are reusing the same mesh and in some areas uh, you, we get some stitch effect between two blocks. So you don't want to push the lighting too high, the indirect lighting too high on this lamp. Now indirect lighting baked in this way will work a lot better if you have various meshes interlocking with one another and maybe not as well with this grid map as you can see. We are, however, going to go back to the GI probe and look at the subdivision parameter. So you can increase the subdivision parameter to refine the lighting a little bit. By default, it's set to 128. As you increase it, the GI probe's data will take more video memory in your game. So it's a trade-off. It will take longer to calculate as well. As we can see, if I rebake the GI probe, it takes a little longer to calculate the result, but you can see that the seams are gone. So we effectively increase the quality, although we do get a little bit of light bleed on the sharp edges of our mesh. And this is inherent to this lighting method. And that is why when you create full 3D game, you have to use different meshes to hide some parts and make sure that the game looks as good as it can. Here is a common issue you might have with global illumination. If I activate my GI probe, I don't have too much trouble right now because I lowered the subdivisions, but if I increase them, you can see these jagged artifacts on the flare gun here. And this is due to the size of my GI probe. So I'm going to lower the subdivisions back. Uh, you can see that if I bake it again, I still have these jagged results. Now, if I increase the size of the box, I guess that the light has a bit more space to bounce around and you can get much nicer results once you do that. You can see that most of the jaggedness has disappeared. If I increase the subdivisions again, they're going to come back, but once again, give it some more space, bake, and you should see a smoother result and you can always lower the subdivisions to get smoother lighting although you will get less details in the reflections on the gun in this case. This model is by Soydev, a Russian artist and you can find a link to it in the video description. But that's it um, as far as setting up the GI probe is concerned. In the next video, we will look at the 3D environment, which will allow us to increase the strength of the ambient lighting at the sky. And we will then look at the post processing effects. I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, and let's see one another in the next one very soon. Bye-bye.